Good afternoon. Good afternoon. One more time. Good afternoon, Good afternoon sir. <laughs> okay. Can I request to the back benches come forward, please? Yeah. Some of them can come here also. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm asking with you, sir. Why don't you join here? Ma'am, you also, so you also can join here. All right. So, uh, I have 20 minutes here. I'll try to make this session very precise. And at least you should basically take, take some takeaway from this session. And I try to make more and more interesting with the subject. Because this is a very interesting topic, which is very close to my heart. And practically, I'm doing it. So a lot of, lot of people are talking about the conversational AI. And one side of people talking about the generative AI. Are they different? Anybody is agree with me? These two technologies are different? Yeah. There is no, nobody raised the hand. True, false. Okay, I'll come back to you. But <clears throat> before I jump into the topic, I'll take a few minutes to set the context well so that like you understand what I'm going to talk. And I, whatever I'm going to talk, that will make sense to you. And practically, I have implemented those things. A uh, little bit about myself, like I am having 25 year experience and I worked into the company uh, Dhanuka Agritech, completed education from Kanpur, MBA, and I am Calcutta, based in Guru Gurugram, and passion for creating more awareness about the cybersecurity, AI, and the fitness. It's very close to my heart. Avid fitness enthusiast and author of a book. And two books are in a pipeline. One is about AI, other one is about purely diet management. And I'm a marathon runner, gymmer, freak, and golfer. Last 13 years, I'm doing marathons, and 99 marathons I've completed, only one left. And it has been 24 years, I have not taken any medicine, not a single pill. Little disclaimer about myself, whatever I'm talking, I pretend I know something, but I know people are sitting in a room, they know better than me what I'm going to talk here. So everyone is an expert, compliment to you guys. And everything I will cover today based on my experience and some copy paste, obviously, and analysis. That's a very candid view of what I'm talking about. Yes, so directly jumping into the topic. So a lot of, lot of people are talking about the conversational AI, which is term very clear, conversational AI. Whatever we are talking, it means I'm translating into the command. And the command has to perform. If I say sit down, sit down, I say up, up, and, but if I add some intelligence in that, so it can sense me. If I give the eyes to that conversation, so it will start feeling it, what I want. If I start writing something or talking something, it will start performing, acting, giving you the results as well. So that's what is a conversational AI. And if whenever we talk about the conversation, conversational AI, so first you have to understand the impact directly. Anything, whatever you are going to buy, any product you are going to buy. So first of all, you have to understand where it is going to be impact if I go for it. So increase sales and the marketing efficiently. AI is directly hitting your marketing. Directly, whether it is a generative AI, whether it is a conversational AI. The second thing is healthcare transformation. Yes, because so many things were on a predictive basis, physical prediction basis. Those things will go away and your level of maturity, deliverables will go up. And the finance, of course, because so many fraudulent activities are happening around and a lot of data is there. Financial data is there for the analysis, which we are always missing sometimes. Something we are missing, then rework, rework, rework. CFO will say, no, it is not working. Some other sources, you have to get the data. Give me some, 
some more sensible data. So like those things will go away. And HR and recruitment. I'm only talking the domains which can be faster picked up with the conversation. But one thing is very important what you have to understand. This conversational means I'm talking with the robots. I'm talking with the machine. I'm talking with the data. I'm not talking with the humans. The models which I'm creating it, they are more self-performer, self-actor. They can basically sense the requirement, input, and they will generate the result, and they will produce the result. It means at the back end, you are not talking with the human. I'm giving you another use case. Let's say there is a thousand people working in a uh, CRM, right, call center. All of a sudden, I brought the change. I replaced that FAQs. CRM guys, what's the job of them? They only work on the FAQs. And if I create the templates of the FAQs and put in the database, remove the human, so your bot will start working like that. So in some part of the world, people start removing the people those are, and Microsoft was the first conversational implementation, probably you might be knowing it, 2,000 people in a one day notice they have removed from the Microsoft US office. They were the part of the CRM team. The people, the team, which developed this, Microsoft first day of implementation, implementation, they removed the entire team. So not to worry, the game is you have to understand the need of it, you have to upgrade yourself. If you not upgrade, definitely you are in a radar. You may lose the job tomorrow. Okay, coming to the next point is, why it is useful? So first slide where I talked about where we can fit in the conversational. Second slide where I'm talking about the conversational AI use for. Definitely one thing everybody is looking for, customer experience. How we can improve? Because earlier, everyone was having the set of data. HR was having one data set. Finance was having one data set. Operation was having factory operation. Everyone was having different data set. No one was working on a central database. So I have taken the, all the data in the central base. And I have taken the entire form of a data, which were legacy data was lying in the company somewhere, I have taken that as well. And placed in a one place, where your Outlook files, people have left the organization, the data is available. The, uh, the, the folders, what you have, people left, those backups are there your invoices, your everything, all type of research data, everything, we brought on one place. So that the chat GTP or any conversational API, whatever you are using globally, uh, freeware, same thing I developed it for the organization. The same database I developed for the organization where you can run the similar prompt-based queries and it will be give you the sensible data the responsible data, I'm using a word, I'll come to this later, but responsible data, so that like you can get more and more used meaningful use cases. Moving on, before I go further, so I like to highlight some of the use cases, best use cases which are quickly achieved by conversational AI. The one of the popular website, Druid, a solution library where over 500 skill in ready-made template, virtual assistant, that can be taken over. So the FAQs, what we are creating, we work creating, so they are available in the format. Aap batao kis se baat healthcare, jaysa meri query hai, healthcare FAQs I want. What my CRM guy is going to talk with the healthcare patient? Choose the template, 500 templates are there. I am into manufacturing. If I am setting up the CRM, so what I am going to talk? Template is available here. Only some tuning you have to do. 10% tuning you have to do as per your business. 90% you can achieve by them. So that's what is the ML algorithm. You have to keep train, train, train your ML algorithm. Add more parameter as per your business and get the relevant result, whatever you want to perform. Next is Dialpad, is another very famous website. 
which is basically giving you another opportunity where you can basically have the CSAT. CSAT is the biggest problem to build the customer experience. Jata hai to jane do, teen din baad. Have you ever noticed whenever you are going to restaurant and whenever you are finishing your food, the first thing before the bill they are asking the feedback and you are giving very candid feedback. Kharaab ta achha tha. The moment you step out, your thought process will change. Your friend experience was bad, so you probably say bad. I'll not go further. You forget, influenced. So there are influences, they can change your thought process. So CSAT will be never right. So the, through AI, I build a model which can immediately get the right feedback and help me to improve my services immediately. It can, okay, no, next thing, next time this kind of patient is coming or this time of person is coming, you have to talk like this. You have to provide these services. You have to attend like that. Sensitive patients, VVIP patients. And Amazon Alexa is another one. Everyone is using it, but what's new in that? New in that is it got more powerful now. Earlier we were talking, okay, switch on the light, switch on this, that, right? Now it is talking more about the data, the relevant data, responsive data. Just imagine, agar if your data is not correct and Alexa has taken the command, what it is going to be performed? Your, how it is going to be resulted? Right? So it is more sensible data generating and giving the results. Why conversational AI? Very simple. Analyze, retrieve, predict, and pass on the information in multiple written or spoken format help. Take customer experience to more. So overall, what I'm talking is build, to build the customer experience, to build the agility and precise information, you need that. Now, uh, let's take another example. The area which can be directly get impacted. Coding languages, everyone knows this, NLP, natural language process. You not need to be worry about uh, Python, you should be aware or any other languages. NLP is there. The natural language commands what we are talking, we can give to the system and system can perform. Biggest impact on the high wage, wage jobs, I mean, they will directly, if I remove entire management team, and basically replace with the conversational AI. Can we survive? Banks already started doing it long back. They introduced the digital banking. Now they are adding the conversational AI in the banking. Just imagine where they are heading it. I mean, the biggest problem for the business is the headcount. If I remove the headcount, I reduce the headcount, your margins will go up. And I will precise, if I add the precise results in that, I mean you will get the X, X, X number of increment in the revenue. So you can't imagine. And innovation definitely, all these things will be there, you will get more suggestions. And country GDP will go up 7.2% by 2023, sorry, zero is extra there, 2023. So, uh, which is another angle here is to measure that. I mean, this, this API, this data, this language is adding the value in GDP, 7%, which is very, very high. By 2030, you will get 7%. Average salary of the three years or AI engineer is 10 lakh to 35 lakh in India. Today, you will hardly find the engineers sitting idle. The demand is so much, so engineers are not available. So upgrade yourself and you will get the more benefit in your career. And ML, NLP framework, so I'm talking about the tech stack. Whenever I'm getting into any kind of you know, implementation, what do I need it? I need at least to have the right tech stack in place. Then I should basically think about it. So this is the famous thing like probably all these things you should have if in case let's say you are in a healthcare, so AI QIF is a framework available there. So probably you have to pick up that. Similarly, if you are aviation, so certain things are available in the world. 
it is available you just choose your domain and look for the particular open source framework which is available which can solve your problem and then you can choose a cloud language and db nlp whatever cases you want to next slide is more interesting which is going to about the platform what all the platforms so it's confusing thousands of people they are introducing the platform which are the good ones so i'm talking about the top 20 platforms which are available in the world so all these probably you might have heard or not heard lambda is number one by the way you should learn that probably you might not knowing it lambda is one of the best platform in the world used for ai other one is the the personally which I like the mid journey and the one which is coming up uh, the next is uh, the last one will which I like very much I'm just waiting for to basically more information x dot ai grok this is going to be change the game already paid version is available in the x if you go on a x you will find this right and they are charging, I think, $40 something. Uh, I saw somewhere, I tried there, I tested somewhat of it, but th they don't have a free version or testing version available. You have to directly pay. As like Chat GTP is giving you the uh, opportunity, Chat GTP 3.0, you can use and test it, but uh, uh, X is directly pay asking for the payment. Microsoft Copilot is another game changer. BARD is another game changer and in video for the specific video is another game changer. What, what all the, so one side we are talking about huge database, other side we are talking about technology stack. Where this is going to run? It is not going to run on a normal CPUs, sorry. Everything is going to be run on a GPUs. That is why we are talking about GPUs, right? So now your CPU to be changed with the GPU and storage has to go up because now you are going to generate the tons of the information to analyze better and produce better, all right? And generative um, adversary network, huh, this you have to learn. GAN is the game in this AI conversation. I, uh, intentionally, I kept this slide so that you can understand because you have all type of data. So the algorithm which is work at the back end, that basically uses the GANs network. And a generative adversarial network is a machine learning model that uses deep learning method to train two neural network to compute against each other. Hold the thought here. Hold the thought here and just read this example. Uh, which I'm trying to say, real face computer, generated face, real or fake, deep fake. It means there, the software which is giving, taking your picture or video and generating the analytics over on that. But the other side of people, they are taking the similar data and they are converting into the whatever they wish to. They are morphing it and they are producing it. But both of the systems are same. Same API, same tax stack, but the intentions are different, right? One is basically using for the deep faking, other is basically producing the real, right? Just hold down this thought and move on. This is the very, very uh, good use case which I'm going to talk. Practically, we have implemented this as well. Normal CV, this is used for the HR. All CVs are, we are loading in a system. Most of the world famous HR systems giving you opportunity to load, integrate with the job portals, where you can download the portals, CVs and all. The first parameter which I have written, please remove all the CVs which has a communication skill problem. Usko da lagana hai kaha, full stop lagana hai kaha, English bolna nahi aata, remove it first of all. I don't want this guy in my company at all. Please remove it. I don't want his CV. I don't want to look at his CV. Just imagine a company where you are applying, you are eligible, and the conversational AI is running at the back end. 
where the company is given the instruction. He has to be qualified in all the parameters. The first parameter is spoken English. If he can't do, remove his CV, he can't deserve the job. Right? If I set these kind of parameters, so it's a machine. It works like that. Understand? So that level of, you know, granularity people are looking for. And when we implement in our organization, and that was the mandate of the HR, because the HR head was qualified from the UK and he was very good in English. He said, first of all, I don't want a person in my organization, they don't write email properly. They have a phonetic problems. Just imagine the thought process of his. And then, ha, huh, this is very important slide, wherein I'm talking about the way how it is, this architecture works it. So you have understand one side you are creating, right? Then why conversational API is different? Because API using foundation. Foundation means a defined template. The, in the one of the slide you see in the 500 templates are available I was talking about. It means the templates are already there. You not to be worried about that and the analyze it. Then you can analyze that data. And the how generative AI, little different. It creates, contextualize, and analyze it. All right? So it is minor different. Only the processing area is little different. There, everything is defined, fixed. You pick up, you connect, and you get the result. Here, you have to con contextualize. Means you have to write every time a model which actually you are expecting. Every time you have to write a model, then you'll get the result. That's the difference. So little bit, few, few more slides, I think I have time's up. I'll take five more minutes to complete this. So this is first innovation happened wherein clinical trial happened under the AI guidance. Totally and totally based on the AI data. No scientists, no physical people got involved in that. And they resulted the, uh, the module which is going to be introduced now. First drug discovery also successfully have done that. And they are also ready to launch this. Gen AI, some of the uh, early adopters, Laurel, Sopify, Accenture, 3M, Rolls-Royce, Siemens, they are the early adopter, and ChatGTP is growing like anything. Banks are started using. If you look at the number of the, you know, going up, so they are using for the customer experience, customer acquisition, and fraud detection, majorly. So people are migrating for this work there, and uh, Deloitte is one of the, uh, uh, there is a study and they are saying is Morgan St Stanley and these companies are adding the value in terms of the revenue. They started quoting because of bringing AI changes in their organization, they are going up. And GA and ITS impact is straight away product development is going up. Your research time cycle got reduced because you have a relevant data available and product designing is taking less time. Biz customers, interaction, information technology, and efficiency and production, all areas are basically getting advantage of it. This is my last slide, wherein I'm clearly talking about CIO with AI called CAIO. This is a new term in the world. People started basically hiring CAIO. Chief Artificial Intelligent Officer or CIO without AI, you can choose which area where you want to ahead. With this note, I'll stop myself and this is my coordinate. You can reach me anytime for any help, any conversation. If you agree, disagree, I'm open for it. But no question right now. We have a short of time. Thank you very much.